Hello, hello. God bless you. God keep you. Crystal Terra Buchanan here. Oh, God bless you. God keep you. May your joy abound and overtake your sorrow. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Oh. What I was going to talk to you about, God put on my heart, is false prophets and false teachers. Uh, I kind of rushed this, but anyway, here it goes. It's going to be short and sweet. Uh, I don't know. God put it on my heart, but it's funny. I didn't really want to talk about it. Uh, I, I don't know. He's taking me in a different direction, so I'm uh, coming out of the Bible about it. But uh, I remember when uh, I recall... <laughs> I recall when I first was telling people some years back that, you know, uh, you know, the things I wanted, you know, I wanted a, a, a little ministry to take and help people, you know, uh, especially children, leading God children to Christ. You know, the way I, I, I was taught, you know, uh, I was around people that used to carry the cross through the street and go out in the neighborhoods and uh, uh, through the projects were all around neighborhoods and talk about Jesus and singing uh, songs, you know, I'm a soldier in the army, and they would walk through the streets carrying a big old wooden cross, and they would talk about Jesus, you know, and tell people to come to the church, invite mainly the children, adults, whatever, but children would follow them, and I was one of the children that would follow them uh, to church, Jefferson Street Baptist Church, and uh, uh so when I was telling uh, this woman in particular about it, and uh, I automatically she come up with, uh, you know, there are, there are false prophets out here, you know, false t teachers, and uh, God talks about in the day when the false prophet comes. So you know what she was saying. She was throwing it in my direction that I'm false and I'm fake, you know, and uh, so I'm like... Uh, at the time, I wasn't asking her for any money. I wasn't asking anybody for any money. As a matter of fact, I was coming out of my pocket, you know, and, and other than that, God was blessing me. I, I didn't do a lot. I've tried a lot of things and, and they didn't succeed. So uh, she came at it just being hurtful and trying to be holy than that. I won't get deep about her, but believe me, she she is, in no way was qualified to uh, <laughs> to try to put me down and to try to uh, disregard uh, uh, my dream of what I wanted to do. And uh, also, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, although she was saying that she wanted to participate in my dream, but... I don't know. I guess, you know, if the people can't get a certain status with you at the time when they want to, then, okay, well, you're a false prophet, you're a false teacher. But, man, you, they, they're not putting any effort in your dream. It's just they want to put a status. They want to move about. They want a, 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 a title, you know. And uh, so, anyway, that's one of the reasons maybe God put it on my heart. And uh, maybe, he, too, he wants to uh, address the issue. So here we go. Uh, a false prophet and a false teacher is a person, uh, well, a true, a true prophet hears from God through dreams and visions. You can go look at Numbers 12 and 6, where God said a false prophet comes to deceive the chosen. Matthew 24 and 23. I do have that one pulled up. Matthew 24, 23 through 28, but I'm only going, yeah, I'm going to do all of it. Then if a man shall say unto you, here is Christ, are there, believe it not. For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. 25, behold, I have, ho I have told you before. Wherefore, if thou shalt say unto you, behold, he is the desert, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is the secret chambers. He Let me go back, I'm sorry. 
uh, King James Bible. This is King James Version. I meant to you do NIV. I'm sorry. Twenty Verse 26 of Matthew 24. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For a, as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whosoever the carcass is, there will be, where will the eagles be gathered together? 28. <laughs> oh, whoa, that was deep. Uh, you can find uh, false prophets in there, 24, Matthew 24, 23 through 28. Also, Peter 3 and 3. And Jude 17, verse 18. You can protect yourself from false prophets and teachers by knowing the word of God. Study the word of God. Like I said, that's the way I was taught. I, I was in a church and that's what they did. They took you through different classes. A uh, master life class, for, for instance. And you were taught mainly to study the Bible for yourself. And, you, and it was Bible based. Uh, you can look at 2 Timothy. 2 and uh, verse 15. Uh, people, uh, a believer doesn't deny, a true believer in Christ doesn't deny the, uh, the uh, uh, a true prophet does not deny the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They believe that they exist. Matthew 3 verses 16 through 17. Uh, they will question the doctrine that denies the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Doubt people who don't believe that Jesus is and God are the same. That he's that God is the Father and Jesus is the Son. I always remember that Jesus taught good news. He talked and, and he taught Jesus died. He was buried and he was resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. And then I'm going to jump down here. A true prophet can be found out. You check them out. You look at their qualities. Are they God-like? Are they Jesus-like but God-like? Are they what God? Would God be pleased with them? Would Jesus be pleased with them? Are they are they talking and walking the same thing? Are they talking one thing and they're walking another path? Are they talking about sin is wrong, but then they're practicing sinful behaviors? They married and they sleeping around with members in the church. I always remember that Satan puts on masks. He was an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. His ministers put on false faces and they are his servants of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 11 and 10. I'm done with that. Uh, I always remember I'm going to come out you know, those, that's Bible, and that's my little writing. I'm learning to write now. Hey, <laughs> so let me go back to, you know, hey, off the script. My mother always said, uh, you could judge a tree by the fruit is burned. And again, like I said, mama used to say all kind of things, and I used to laugh. But, you know, like I said, as I got older and childish, being childish, I was laughing at it. As I got older and I matured, I understood what she was saying. Especially, she used to always tell me that about friends. And when I look at my life now, I understand that's why I don't have a lot of people. I don't have a lot of friends. I have certain people, and and I say I I use the term friend loosely. You know, like I said, I have a friend of forty something years, but that's questionable. But uh, other than that, uh, I don't have no max friends. I have family, but I don't have friends. I don't have people I really can say my friend. You know. Uh, but my mother always would say that uh, uh, 
to tell me and to warn me, watch the people that I'm around. So if I'm hanging around people that's stealing, my mother would tell me, if you hanging around people stealing, are you hanging around chicken? They see her as being harsh. Come on with it. Not really bad work. Being harsh. They're going to assume that you harsh too. And they're going to treat you like they treat her because you hang around her. And I was like, well, you know, I'm mumbling and <laughs> yeah, why am they on what? And come on with it. I know I'm old school, but I know you remember this. My mother used to always tell me, you better be careful who you hang around because, and be careful where you go because you get with some guys, get around the wrong guys, they'll run a train on you. I used to crack them out, they're going to run a train because I'm thinking about a train going. But like I said, when I was a child, I was childish and I laughed and now I became a duck and it was like, no, I understand, you know, and that almost happened to me before. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, wisdom. Thank God for parents. Thank God for strong parents. Thank God for wise parents. But like I said, yeah, my mama taught me that. And I start, I got around some friends and situ, I got in a situation like that. And thank God, my mother's that instinct, what my mother said kicked in. And I called my uh, I called my friend and I asked him, I said, hey, can you come around here? I said, this person got me hemmed up. And they talking, you know, I don't think they're going to really let me out. And at that time, my friend came around there and he got me. He got me up out of there. But yeah, I thank God for my mother's wisdom. Like, okay, that instinct, that intuition, trust that. You know, not just being a woman, being a male, young, old, whatever. Trust that instinct. If you get that feeling of something telling you, hey, something's not right. Or something's not right with this person. Something's not right with this group. Get away. Get away. Well, however, get away. If you got to run, run. You remember the Bible, Joseph, when uh, the king's wife was after him, he ran up out of his coat. So it's, there's nothing wrong. My mother said again, she said, nothing be the bad stand. It took me a long time to get that one. And that means if something's happening, don't try to stand there. That's what I wish for all the young people out here now. Rather than stand around, running around, somebody hit you, you run and go get a gun, a knife, and you stab at somebody. Forget that. If you can't fight, other than that, what's run? Live to see another day. Run. Male or female. Run. Get away from it. There's all kind of choices that you can have besides picking up guns and picking up knives because a gun is not the only way to kill a person you know i'm not with all of that you know i, I that's my personal opinion. i'm not with all of that but i i thank god i'm not against banning guns and all that i i do love that uh the stores decided to take the semi-automatic weapons out i do love that you know but uh i'm not gonna get deep with that but like i said you don't need to be pulling no guns. You don't need to be pulling knives. Because people kill people with knives all the time. And so, just murdering people, period. You know, when you if you can't physically fight a person, you know, run. Like my mother said, nothing be the bad stand. You know what I'm saying? Run. Walk away. Get away. Live to see another day. You know. Dead, what you gonna do? You die for what? Or you kill somebody for what? And then maybe down the road, you get killed because you took somebody's life. My mother said again, I'm on my mother. Guys just feed me my mother. She said, when you dig one ditch, you better be prepared to dig another one. And, and whoo, went over there like that. But yeah, and mama told the truth. If you take somebody's life, there's a probability, a strong probability that they family, they loved, they, loved, they were loved too. When you take a human life, they have mamas, they have daddies, they have sisters, brothers, cousins, nieces, nephew, all of that. When you do that, think that person could come for you, you know. You know, I can hear your voices now. When is it okay to take a life? I mean, protecting yourself. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. If you're protecting yourself, someone has you hemmed up, you know, self-defense, true self-defense, by all means, everybody know it. You know what I'm saying? That's not hard. We understand that. 
but just because somebody stepped down your shoe, because somebody talked about you, somebody took your girlfriend, you know, if they took her, then she wasn't yours anyway. Your wife, your significant other, if they took them, they wasn't yours anyway. Somebody hit her. Somebody said something wrong to her. Somebody's looking at you wrong. Somebody said something about you. Somebody said something about your relative that died. You know, I was looking at a video. Yeah, most of that violent stuff like that is blocked out. But this one thing happened to get through. And uh, uh, my cousin posted it. And I'm like, you know, it messed me up because it bothers my spirit. Here it is. A young guy, he's popping the guy in the mouth because the guy evidently, from what I gather, because I'm not one of those people that, oh, I see it on media and it's a video, everything's true. I'm not one of them. I'm going to pick stuff apart. But from what I've seen and, and I've heard, it seemed like it was a full, complete story. And basically, he was beating the guy, he's smacking the guy in the mouth and stuff because he said something about somebody dead. And I guess he threw up like some gang signs or whatever and made some little gang uh, 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 acknowledgement in an email or in a text. But I was like, you popping, you standing here. I could see if it was a fight. Okay, you battling or whatever. Like the one little video I had peeped in, they was fighting and the guy ran into the door or something, knocked himself out. But you took and you walked up on this guy and you beat this guy over somebody saying something about somebody dead. Okay, yeah, I, that's sad and that's wrong. Okay, you you cuss him out or whatever. To me, that's that's something that could have been done. But you popped this guy in the mouth. You physically hit this guy. And he didn't really fight you back. My mother told me this. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to take it to the grave. Like I said, my mama was full. My family, all my aunties, now, they full of, was full of wisdom. And I thank God I didn't get it then, but I thank God I got it later. And that's what saved my life. My mama said, if you back a rat up in a corner, it will fight you. And I'm a living witness to tell you that's true. <laughs> I found that the hard way. <laughs> Woo, Lord Jesus. I'm getting ready to crack you up, and I'm going to get back to the point. But uh, I had some sunflower seeds in my drawer. I was probably 15 years old, something like that, 14, 15. And I had sunflower seeds, you know, I caught myself putting them in my drawer. Lord, they had that flood. At, uh, I can't think what year it was. In the 70s, they had a flood, and it uh, made the rats come out of sewers and stuff. So anyway, um, uh, I was looking in the drawer. A rat jumped out near my arm. I ain't lying. It scared the stuffing out of me. I was like, oh, my God. And my mama said, you shouldn't have them uh, sunflower seeds in there. It was cornered. And therefore, it attacked. Getting back to what I was saying about the guy that hit the guy in the mouth that was in the uh, in the car. But he's fighting the guy over what he said about somebody dead. You popped that guy in the mouth. You cornered him. He didn't retaliate then. But. People fail to realize these little shoots. Oh, I don't know why they got shot. I don't know why they did this. All of that stuff comes from where a person like that did that. And he's not thinking about it. And here it is. You standing in the store. You standing in Kroger's. You standing in uh, BP. You standing in uh, 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 some restaurant somewhere. And all of a sudden that person sees you. And oh, yeah, that's right. I remember he took and beat me up. That's the guy right there that popped me in my mouth. You got that piece. Yeah, you got that knife. You get that rope retaliation. And then people are like, oh, man, I wonder what happened. He just came up killed. Now, he didn't just come up and kill him. That guy previously had beat that guy up, and that guy did, didn't fight him back. And now he's fighting him back. It don't take no whole lot up. It don't take no whole lot up. You know, when you dig one ditch, my mama said you better dig two. But at that, with, with me saying that, I'm not one saying, let's be bad about it. Oh, you know, that, that, that gangster stuff. Let's go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why you might as well kill him. But think about it. If you would have killed him so that he wouldn't come back to retaliate, you're going to take a life because he said something. She said something. They said something about somebody dead. Or they threw up some type of, uh, made some, some, something related to some gang stuff. You're going to take that person's life. You're going to take that, that woman's child. Here's a scenario. Thank you, Jesus. Here's a, here's a scenario. And this is something to think about when you're killing somebody. I don't care what color you are. 
when you get ready to kill somebody. Think about this. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Mm. God, mm. what if you did the person doing the retaliation they got the gun from being beat up. I asked the person, went out and killed the person for saying something about dead. What if you end up taking that life and down the road, you end up finding out that person was a blood relative? Woo! Mm. Lord, can you imagine? Can you imagine that? Mm. You take a person's life and find out down the road that was your brother. And you know with the way things are now in the world, it, you never know who's related to you. Believe me, you never know who's related to you. That stuff that it, when you take a life to me, it seems like it will be on your conscience anyway. But if it's not on your conscience, that's the fault of the true teachers and the true preachers. Because that's what... The job of a pastor, a preacher is to get you to know God, to know Jesus, to know that killing people for no non-self-defense is wrong. That's why God said, vengeance is mine. Let me deal with it. Come to me, pray. Let me handle whatever hurt you. Let me do it because I can do it way better than you. When I do it, you're not going to get no time. You're not going to have it on your conscience. You're not going to pass it on to your generation. To generation, to generation. generation. Let me take it. Let me fight your battle. You know. God is awesome. And uh, I hear you too. Well, what is your position? My position is what God tells me to do. I do what God tells me to do. I don't do what I want to do. Because I am not my own. I'm going, I go through some sad times and you know what I'm saying? I go through what I go through. But you know what? I know whatever I'm going through, he's with me and he keeps me. You know, and when I do his will, excuse me, he takes care of me. He takes care of me in ways that he gives me gifts. He gives me gifts. I'm not monetary, just monetary, but he makes me smile. And, um, uh, even when I am sad, it's worth it because there's not always joy in being obedient, but yet and still I do what he tells me to do. Uh, I'm getting a little long winded in here. It's 614. So I did, you know, I, I'm making good time. And like I said, uh, God's awesome. He's taking care of me today. Uh, he takes care of me every day. You know, uh, I thank God for bills being paid. I thank God for for uh, people that have been nice to me, you know, uh, I thank God and I pray that God blesses their families. Uh, uh, I just pray for the world. I just pray for the world. I pray for all the people in the world. I pray for, uh, I can't say I pray for violence to stop because it is what it is. I just pray for understanding and guidance. I pray for I pray for victims families. I pray for people that don't know God. I mean that's all I, that's that's my ultimate prayer. I pray for people that don't know God. I pray that they get to know God. I'm not going to ever tell you come to this church. This is the only church. Go to that church. That's the only church. Listen to that pastor. That's the only pastor. Listen to that path. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, 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 I just pray that people learn to pray. I pray that people learn to give vengeance, give their grievances, give their anger to God. It is so sad. And, uh, mm. I, I'll leave that for another time. I, I, I won't talk about that. But people that have children that go out here and take other ch children and other people's lives are adults. 
They go out here and kill people. Uh, oh, there should be some reprimands, and I won't discuss them now. But there, there should be some there, there, there should be some punishments. There, there should be some consequences in other areas uh, uh, for that. Uh, maybe they'll see it. Maybe they don't, but there there should be some consequences when when uh mm, people say that they don't have knowledge of a person, especially a child with semi automatics and stuff, and people riding Ubers and stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah, but the insanity stuff. Now, nah, I'm 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 not in favor of that at all for a defense in a, in a, in such a manner as that. No. Uh, but I pray for those families. I pray for uh, I pray for for the the shooters family. But most important, I pray for those people that have lost their loved ones, children. I pray for the teachers and the principals. I pray for the school system, public and public school system and the private school system. I pray for them all. You know, I I. I I, uh, I know you're on edge. You know, I, I just entered a facility today. You know, I went to a school today and people have to have cameras. They're they monitoring you before you get in. God forbid you be digging in your nose. I'm sorry, I'm not just taking the, you know, the death lightly. But, the you know, you just, there's no privacy when you pull up to an area. You know, you have to have cameras now that's focusing on the parking lot. Not just inside the schools, but focusing on the parking lot. Then when a person comes in, you have to watch their mannerism. You have to look at them and watch their bags. And I mean, you know, it's just just having to live like that, having to work like that. You work in the front desk and you got to monitor this person because you first, you know. I met a lady today. God bless her. She was so nice to me. Wonderful reception. But I'm looking at her. I'm looking at her and she's looking at me. And I can understand and I can feel it. That, that, that's something I can feel it. Her, 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 uh, ooh, her, her uneasiness. You know, you know, who is this coming? Is, is this person a disgruntled person? You know, is this a previous student? What's going on? You know, uh, are they here to harm? So, and then, you, you know, you're the first person that if a gunman did come in, you're the first person that they could get. You know, so, woo, mm, I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my stomach, that uneasiness, that queasiness, you know. And think about dealing with that on every visit to the entrance of facility. So, God, let's get together. Let's pray about that. Pray for our children, grandchildren, our children, and, 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 and the workers that are in these facilities. Those, that's where our prayer should be. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for God to put a hedge of protection around the school system, around the workers and the teachers, you know, around the security people that are in place in a facility. Let's pray for them and pray that they are uh, 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 aware and that their intuition is on point <laughs> because those are the ones we need, you know. When somebody don't look right, hey, let their tuition come in. Not let they, them running around here trying to flirt with students or smiling up in other people's face. Let's make sure, hey, let's pray for them. You know, hey, Lord, let them be on point. Lord, intercede. Give them a spirit and a mind to concentrate on the evil that may present itself. Up in the schools, or in a business, or in a, in, in a, 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 a public facility, a public place. You know, don't let Satan have the power. Let's turn Satan's kingdom down. Let's turn Satan's weapons down. Let's not let the weapon, when he fire, let's not let that weapon harm. You know. But let's stay prayed up. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is very powerful. So I'm not going to keep you long. Like I said, I said what God wanted me to say. Uh, like I said, beware, be aware, be wary of false prophets and false teachers. People that's not talking about God is the uh, 
uh, of the Alpha and Omega. Uh, be, be weary. Be weary. Uh, I heard a guy. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to say this real quick. I was listening to a guy and uh, talk about false prophets and false teachers and how God will, when God gives you a message, he, he gives me a message, he'll put people in, in my path to make sure that I'm on point and, and that I know what I'm, I, I need to speak about. And uh, I was listening to this guy and he said, he remember he used to be God. He felt like he was God, you know, because of the things he could do and how he could do something. And I'm sitting there looking like, Mm. <laughs> yeah, you you were scary back then, but to think that you was God, you know, I'm quite sure a lot of people, there are people out there that think they're God, especially people that worship the devil, but to think that you're God, I mean, uh, that's kind of up here for me, because to me, for you, I mean, you know, he said what he said, and I'm not knocking what he said. I mean, I don't agree with that, but I mean, at the time, I'm quite sure people think that they have a little power to do something. Then, okay, yeah, you, you might think you're a guy. But my thing is this, especially being a woman and having given birth to children, I can't see how you could think that you possibly God, because in order to be God, you are able to give birth, to give life, not just through the birth canal, but you're able to sustain life. To me, for you to think you're a God, when people give all those children, those babies that were murdered, you have, you have the power to resurrect them. If you can't take a life and resurrect it, can you possibly, how can you fix your mouth to think that you possibly, God got God to work through you like he did Paul and when, and, and Elijah did, you know and Jesus when he called Lazarus out, okay but other than that, if you can't take a life and resurrect it even when Paul went up uh, well, you know, Jesus, Jesus did. He said, I do it about my father. But for a regular human being, a nobody to say that you're a God, you're not Jesus to say that you're a God. Mm. Whew, thank God you don't think that no more. I pray to God that you don't. But uh, <laughs> Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Yeah. Christ crucified. Christ resurrected. Easter's coming. And there will be a lot of little plays about it. But Jesus is not a play thing. He's very real. Please, please, please get to know him. You don't have to find him in a church. You can find him in a bar. <laughs> All you do is just call out, Jesus, here I am. I'm a nobody. I need your help. Change me. Rearrange me. Make me better than what I am. I'm a filthy rag. I am nothing. Make me what you would have me to be. I surrender to you. You can say it in a park. You can say it in a bar. You can say it in a car. You can say it laying down. You can say it standing up in a school. It doesn't matter where. All you're doing is God save me. God help me. And he will hear you. God bless you and keep you. And may the rest of this day bless you and you be happy and you smile and your day be void of violence and anger and distrust. Bye.